Uh, you know what you are? You're, you're one of those little uh, fancy lads, aren't you? <laughs> Link and I are cruising the mountain, bro. We figured we a little juice. We're still very early on here on the Unkind Rewind, and since we don't have a ton of you know actionable feedback or anything like that to uh you know talk about labyrinth uh i figured it would make sense to let the audience who probably knows me get to know uh one of my other co-hosts sean mcgrath um and you'll probably get to know me a little bit through this too, uh, if you're if you're coming into this somehow randomly. Um, but I guess Sean, uh, how are you doing? I'm good. What I'm wondering is if the actionable feedback that you receive is going to be like, "We're good on Sean." <laughs> it, 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 I've I've gotten good feedback about you so far. So <laughs> if it's like uh we're okay with the the contribution anything more than that. No, I don't think that's it. Um so Sean um I guess where did you grow up for the audience? I think uh the best way yeah, I mean it's it's a hard I know it's hard for answer. me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Cuz we both moved around a, a fair amount as kids. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of new schools. Mm -hmm. um, I went to four I went to four different elementary schools in four different states. Um had I actually or just, sorry, started, three states. Three states but four cities. Had I started school in San Diego after first grade, I might have been able to compete with that. But um we never made it that far. We had a brutal summer in San Diego. Okay. Nobody liked it. And then we pivoted for a plan B, which was Minnesota. And I, so I didn't even know that you spent any yeah. time in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm learning new things here. <laughs> things we find out. And not uh, one of their one of their more brutal summers that they've mm. had in the 80s. And I'm imagining that there were a few. So instead of uh, a life on the West Coast, it was an adolescence in the Midwest. And then um, due to parents' job situations, mm -hmm. found myself in Western Pennsylvania in a suburb of Pittsburgh for uh, a couple of years, junior okay. high. And yeah, I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, yeah. And then back to Minnesota for high school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, met you at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. And then pretty soon after that, uh, found my way back to the West Coast Yeah, and was out in Portland, Oregon for what I thought was going to be like a two-year plan. And that, that turned into stick. 15, 16? <clears throat> Almost 14. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, I've been in New York City ever since. So, yeah, I mean, charting the flight pattern is... Uh, a bit uh, arduous, but yeah. East Coast, West Coast, Midwest. You're born in New York, too. Born in New you York. You skipped. Yeah. You skipped over that. Uh, you you skipped straight to San Diego, <clears throat> as I often do. Yeah, as as we all do. Uh, why? Okay, so what? I, I I'm most curious about what the deal with San Diego was. Um, there was some family that spoke of it like it was El Dorado, man. Like okay, they, it was. Uh, yeah. Like I mean, I uncle, like San Diego. I don't. I don't an uncle and a cousin, yeah. both associated with the Navy, who were just who preached that. Okay. Uh, a California. So it wasn't song. like the theater scene because I know that it's got an okay theater scene because of what yeah. you see. San Diego's got a really good theater program, right? Yeah, it wasn't like anything yeah. like that. My okay. folks were both involved in in theater, but nothing like that brought them there. I think it was just the the my mom had kind of had it with New York. And okay. I'm sure it's very hard to raise young children in New York. As as we know, yeah, uh, with uh, our yeah. co-host, fucking Adam. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think she had had her fill, and mm. despite San Diego not being what she was looking for, the the promise of a 
of a complete, completely new mm-hmm. setting, I think was attractive enough, attractive enough to make the move. Now, was she from the cities? Is that why there was the return to? No, that's the weird thing. Okay. It's like there was, um, my mom was from the East Coast, but spent most of her time in Hawaii. But for whatever reason, a lot of her family kind of emigrated there. Okay. Um, from Hawaii? Least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you went the wrong way. <laughs> I know. I and mean, talk to anybody in Minnesota. I mean, I mean, yeah. as you know, if once, once Minnesota gets its grips on you, I mean, it's kind of that, I feel like it's that way with, I feel like people leave the place that they kind of, you know, grew up in and then end up inevitably. I mean, a fuck. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the cities, but, um, fucking ended up back here. Every time you try to get out, it is a little bit like the mob. Kind of. Yeah. They pulled me back in. Um, so, so you and I both went to college for. You, we both did you major in English film you were the English guy I was the yeah you know I, I couldn't remember if you majored or minored in film I mean the, the film film program at Minnesota was sorely lacking all, all theory all no theory and crit. there was one once did you take the screenwriting class with Pope yeah Pope yeah how was did you end up with anything did, no, did you even not. write a feature in that no okay no I mean it what I wrote is so bad. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I wouldn't want to read anything that I wrote when I was like twenty three. You know, or twenty. I guess we were twenty. Fuck, you were twenty one at the time, right? It was yeah. It was about like a a drill sergeant whose men keep dying. Mm-hmm. Now he's retired. Sure. And uh, I mean, it, there was some kind of Colonel Troutman, Colonel Troutman esque uh-huh. elements to it about okay. having to go and like save the the one guy who is yeah. still. Troutman, Troutman's uh, what's his fuck from Rambo, right? The Colonel from Rambo. Yeah, yeah it was it was so mm-hmm. so bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I got through um, my university studies. I think turn your with, game down just a little bit more. You're kind of peeking out a little bit. Better, 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 yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I I didn't feel. Did you ever feel particularly challenged in school? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, we both graduated early. Uh, I graduated. Uh, I took two summer classes and graduated in three years. We walked uh, in the December. Yeah, graduation. We, we got done a little. <laughs> that that little was an early. epic walk. Um, they wouldn't call my. It's, we probably we had planned out. Okay, so we had planned out this whole like officer and a gentleman thing playing out, where Sean was going to do a huge pratfall on stage. Pratfall on stage when they gave him his diploma, and I was walking right after him. And I was going to carry him out in my arms, uh, and they wouldn't call my fucking name. <laughs> they were so alarmed by what had happened yes. with the pratfall, not and, knowing it was a, a bit. And then I could only mug. I know. Like, and I was committed. Yeah, you were committed, but like they would not call my name. <laughs> so I couldn't walk out and carry you off. So you had to limp off the stage. In uh, hindsight, yeah. with a couple of rehearsals, we would have I know, I know we, we would have waited it. until your name was called. Yeah, you would have slipped after my name was called, yeah, for sure. Um it would have taken your thunder and your applause. Oh, I no one, no one. This was at the University of Minnesota. No one was applauding. The, the, the applause was a light smattering of claps from the family members who were in Northrop Auditorium, which is gigantic. Uh, like you wouldn't have heard it. You, the the applause wasn't a thing that was heard, especially yeah. in December. Like yeah, a couple of smacks. Yeah, it was a weird weird time to graduate. Um, and then, yeah, you found your way to Texas. I found my way to the West Coast, and yeah, uh, we've kind of built our forts. Yeah, we've always like sort of come back to like, oh, we should do something. Yeah, and, and then and then it always kind of uh, falls apart. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like like a lot of things, and and yeah. like regardless, it's, it's of- just hard to make things work when you're not <clears throat> when you're not in the same place. I think. Yeah, and also just the like anybody who's in the creative pursuits, if there's not that deadline and Mm -hmm. there's not that request and need for it, if you're just kind of putting something creative into the ether that may or may not get produced and no one is clamoring for it. Uh The only manager is you. Yeah. Uh, And it's very easy to not do that, especially, I mean, we're not, we're not working a ton now, but for, for years and years and years, 
you were working three jobs. I was working three jobs. Yeah. Uh, I had my like my hourly job that I would do for health insurance. And then I would kind of use that as the safety net, as the bedrock yeah. that would pay rent. And then right. I could, yeah. And you could uh, pursue, pursue creative things. ventures, but like, you know, I, and <clears throat> so there were times and, before that, uh, before that safety net job too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, so in, in, um, you got to Portland in what, 2002 or three? Two. Yeah. Like late summer, 2002. Um, so in Portland, it didn't take you too long to sort of uh, ingratiate yourself into the artistic community. <laughs> uh, how, how did that start? Uh, first couple of years was doing stand-up. Mm -hmm. um, was it mostly mics? Oh, yeah. Or were you? Did you ever get to the point where you were like doing uh, featuring or anything like that? No, I mean there were yeah. there were maybe like two or three things in my life that I've ever been paid to do stand up. Mm -hmm. I did a uh, employee party. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> was and it, it was, for your company? Were you working no, there? Okay. No, it was for. Okay. <clears throat> so did I, this happen because I, of Livewire? No, or okay. before that. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I bartended and waited tables. Oh. when I first moved to Portland and it was, was a weird time when you did that too, because like uh, it was, it was hot on the heels of just to put it time wise, hot on the heels of the tech bubble bursting. And mm -hmm. so like any money, like we, we basically graduated into a recession mm -hmm. and in Portland unemployment at that time, cause I had considered moving to Portland, but Portland specifically unemployment was what, like 8% or something. It was, yeah, it was like serial killers were the thing that were mostly employed over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you're, you would, you would have a different job every like three months because the restaurant you worked at would close. I bounced around restaurants. I bounced around hotels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was, because I had done writing with you yeah. at the Minnesota Daily, mm -hmm. there had, you know, occasionally was some freelance article i could maybe pull in and hope right. that i get to get a little bit more uh you know steady work from mm -hmm. but never actually got like a, a full-time position mm -hmm. was um, that mostly at the oregonian or no just a and e things okay okay here and there yeah um one of the sites that i <laughs> worked for was a um adult website review mm -hmm. uh page called uh, it was something made uh, sex herald or no it was it was it the herald oh, okay okay it was like the sex dot com mm -hmm. and they reviewed like uh toys sure. mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, direct -to video movies and then websites mm -hmm. and so yeah you'd get this assignment for the week that would be like here are the 20 websites and we need <laughs> you know 350 words on each of them yeah and so you'd peruse them i guess mm -hmm. that's the best word for, for sure. it mm -hmm. highlight the pros and cons and then advise <laughs> yeah. the consumer if that was worth it so you're at the bleeding edge of uh ux ui if you're lucky <laughs> well you were <laughs> like you yeah. were you but you were only like you were given you were on the feedback portion not the uh not the actual no no it like would... money yeah <laughs> i don't know what it was i mean you take a job you know what i mean mm -hmm. you take a job you do it yeah um, at that time. So, yeah. So stand up comedy would, you know, I I'd, I'd try to get a couple open mics a week and then I was working a film festival, just kind of volunteer coordination, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And somebody advised me about live wire radio, which I hadn't heard of at the time. It was a new show, not produced for, but aired on our local public broadcasting yeah. uh, radio. OPB. And it ended up being syndicated too. Like we had it. In yeah. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Ended up getting enough uh, affiliates and then PRI finally swooped in mm -hmm. public radio international. And that was like the bulk of my time there. I would say my first episode is being part of, and for those of you who don't know, live wire radio was a lot in a lot like a Prairie home companion yeah. template. Contemporized. Contemporized, yeah. yeah. Uh, you didn't have to be Lutheran. Oh. And we had a host, we had musical guests, we had sketch comedy, we had characters, we had 
uh, you know, people of note that yeah. would come on and talk, authors and mm -hmm. politicians. And yeah, yeah, yeah it was great. Peter, Peter Buck was on once. Yeah, he called you, right? Did, uh, you, you, yeah, you called, you called. Yeah, the the one call. Oh no, Pete, David Eggers wasn't on the show, was he? That was you were at a book signing or something. I was like, right? yeah, he he was a guest, but he was doing a book signing in, in coordination with that. Okay, but yeah, Peter Buck once was playing with the minus five, his band up at the REM. Yeah, with Scott. And McCauley. I was like, oh yeah, my uh, one of my good buddies is a big fan of REM. I was like, oh cool. And I go, can you call him? <laughs> and it's yeah, just like happened. a. I know. Yeah, just a moment of like uh -huh. one or two seconds of just kind of a stare and then, okay. Yeah. And then I just yeah. called Josh and said, uh, here's Peter Buck. I don't even know <laughs> if I said, here's Peter Buck. I was just like, hey, hang on. I can't remember. I yeah. I, I mean, I, obviously the phone call happened. Um, <clears throat> so you were, you were a writer and on air talent on that. Yeah, I came on at 24 as a writer and performer with their uh, – troop so to speak and then that job uh yeah i mean through that job you just met other creatives yeah. other writers sure. other yeah. is that so, how you ended up in the like in the acting scene also not or really i mean not out on the side anyway a little bit yeah um i yeah i think i, I got an agent maybe the middle of 2006 Okay, so you would have already been on at that point. On I would have been on Livewire, but you know it was weird because it's not like what I did on Livewire translated at all. Sure, we were essentially vaudeville comics. Mm -hmm. um, I started doing commercial work and then TV and some independent movies, kind of throughout my time there. And then, uh, yeah, I was always kind of involved with sketch comedy to one degree or another. Yeah. You know, even before. Livewire, we were doing short films and then that uh, transition to doing those 48 hour films, yeah. which we had some good success mm -hmm. uh, before we soured on the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you went to, you made it to the national thing twice, right? Made it your, to the nationals like twice. Squad kind of? Our, our film, yeah. Our and you were directing, one. right? Yeah, I was directing and then part of the, the writing, writing team. team. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very rarely would I act. I, I said, like, I would act if somebody no-showed. Yeah. Because you only have two days or yeah, maybe yeah. Uh -huh. one day to shoot it. Um, So if somebody is hungover or sick or can't get off work, then suddenly I was like, okay, well, I'll just do it. Right. Um, But, yeah, had good success uh, a little bit with that and then just kind of found – realized the – uh futility of it in some ways right because what's it ultimately going to get you exactly yeah. yeah uh it's an exercise in whether or not in in just the the challenge can you yeah. can you do it can you do a short <laughs> film in two days um and it, i mean it helps like it helps you get chops you know as far as like yeah making oh something. absolutely like it, it's it's not like it doesn't have a purpose but at a certain point you know it's sort of it, it sort of stops being uh being being what you need it to be in terms of just grit and adaptability mm -hmm. um you know kind of adjusting on the fly great yeah. oh great yeah, prim yeah great primer <laughs> yeah uh, but and, but it's also 48 hours and like building something around certain prompts mm -hmm. um you know creatively it's it's limiting what what the end product can be yeah and all those movies are on youtube under yeah. cinema syndicate mm -hmm. um and then yeah tooth and I nail used... was very good i like i thought tooth and nail was great yeah um, mockumentary so... about a vampire running mm -hmm. for state senate um kind of i mean with respect to guest and uh rob reiner like I feel like we were a little bit before like this, the deluge of mockumentaries. Right. Yeah. Like that kind of came in after that. I mean, I guess the British office had already happened, but yeah. 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 And that probably uh, that the British office is the thing that set all of that off. I mean, that's, yeah, but that's... there was a time delay uh, and, and tooth and nail came in under, came in before basically the American office had happened. Oh, five. Yeah. Oh, 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 six, maybe? Oh, six. I think American Office is 06. Okay. 
Um, we like to say that we started the American office. Yeah, so, yeah for, for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, hard to verify that. Um, don't look and it up. Yeah, don't look it up. <laughs> yep. So I started my own sketch show in 2014 called Bath Night, which uh, I just kind of got tired with the X factor of a cast. Yeah. Um, in, in with regard to sketch comedy, like you always have this four to eight person cast, like a band. Mm -hmm. But if people fall out with one another, if schedules don't work well, then it's difficult to kind of right. rehire temporarily or like maybe the group just expands. Um, I never really liked that. So the formation of the sketch group that I started was based on that the cast would change every time I would do a show mm -hmm. and uh, I would just not rely on a cast to write which oftentimes right. you did have to do in sketch mm -hmm. comedy yeah. Um, by just writing it myself. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, hope to do another one of those shows and again, learn. How operate. many have you put on? So we've done a couple sketch festivals, but uh, full run. And you like shows. rent out a, rent out a black yeah. box theater. And we've yeah. done three years of those. Okay. Yeah. Um, hopefully more, but uh, yeah, it's, it's tough right now just to, Especially in New York with just the um, hurdles you have to kind of get over right. um, financially and also just mm -hmm. within, you know, building the community post-COVID in, in theater. Uh, you know, I got an email today that UCB is slinking back to doing uh, okay. shows. They they were out in LA mm -hmm. post-COVID, but they did not come back to New York. Right. Um, it's too expensive. I mean, they closed one. They closed the bigger LA store too. They they only had the Franklin uh, location open in LA, and yet so many people have kind of come from those. Yeah, to, uh, I mean, stages. You know, the the issue, of course, is that they don't have a liquor license and therefore uh, don't make any money. Yeah, it's all ticket sales. Yeah, and, they, and, well, ticket sales and and class, you know, and and people paying to take the classes. Yeah, and and basically paying performers with spotlight and exposure yeah like, that's it yeah bullshit yeah mm -hmm. yeah just just um, like i mean there's there like there's a whole fucking comedy scene uh with the stand-ups in the 70s in la fucking basically rioted over that treatment mm -hmm. like at the store and the improv that happened this will be great exposure is always the biggest red flag you can yeah, total you bullshit. can get into as an artist mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cause you know, you can't pay your rent with exposure. Nope. Sure. Can't. Uh, so yeah, I found my way eventually to New York just as kind of a, the, the confluence of getting fed up with how the difference basically between how Portland talked about being a haven for artists and sure. how they actually just like Austin did. Yeah. Yeah. And how they actually, uh, valued them. Yeah. So, um, Look for a bigger market, found a bigger market. We'll see if it sticks, but uh, so far, so it's, it's okay. New York's unforgiving. Um, yeah, but your your cost of living is relatively uh, kept in check, and yeah. you at least have like a commercial agent. So that's true. Yeah. Yep, Doug Keston, one of the best in the biz, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, Maybe this is the year that uh, the thaw finally happens and people kind of. Yeah. You start to make out. headway in casting rooms. Yeah. It, it was a little bit. Um, it was bad timing. You might say with COVID because it sure. felt like. You were some, starting to pick up steam. You were starting to get more jobs and then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just in terms of connections too, like a lot of those things that. But you have to be able to go into a room to make those. Yeah. 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 Um, all of those early burgeoning relationships, friendships, yeah, collaborations, died the vine. yeah, just yeah. died from the exposure. You know, just sitting there on the hill, no food, no water. Yeah. Um, so you have been in some things. Uh, I've been. Want, as... do, do we, we should talk about some of them. I think we should probably wait until it comes up, right? <laughs> I mean, do you think that we'll actually get to a point where somebody will recommend it? I, I mean, it, the yeah, I guess it's been what fifteen years. Fifteen right? years, yeah. 
some eventually we will have someone who 16 years so if someone was say 15 or 16 yeah the, about when that came now, out yeah. they're about 30 uh-huh it'll yeah, it'll course, probably happen uh Sh- Sean was talking about yeah Sean Sean was in Twilight <laughs> I was in Twilight yeah. um I like to say I'm are you most... team Edward or team uh Jacob I think both would be an adversary to us sure okay um being that both so team neither. Edward yeah team neither you could say team neither you could just say team frat boy sure sure uh, t- uh sean sean was one of the uh, you are credited as frat boy number two right i'm four uh i like to say i was the upperclassman okay okay and i was older than those guys by two years yeah, maybe sure oh. uh but yeah the frat boys that yeah confront i'm um, uh circle uh yeah uh, you you pass by when they're in the shop when she's in the shop in is right. it forks is that the town that they're supposed to be in then that's the town Port Angeles. That's the town they're supposed to be in. Yeah. But they were shooting in Port Angeles. Shooting in Port Angeles and Scapoose. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we, of course, after she gets a book about vampires, we uh, corner her, in circle the, her by by her car. Yeah. She doesn't have a car, so she's just in a she's in the parking, parking lot. lot. Right? Yeah, yeah, like a derelict, and okay. We kind of come out of the shadows. I mean, as I've said before, we are the the most dangerous real aspect of twilight yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah you're in twilight uh you're in a few indies that people can watch um, yeah like i there were there were bigger roles in smaller things mm-hmm. and then very small roles in bigger things i mean you're the star of deep dark deep dark michael medallia's i believe debut feature uh, I, ho- oh, psycho I, I seriously horror. actually really like that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, uh, it's worth the watch. Not ju- not just the like, oh, my buddy's in this. Like, I right. actually really like Deep Dark. Yeah, I think that's on Prime. Yeah, it and certainly then, was. Yeah, a million years ago, I was in a, an independent war movie, World uh-huh. War Two movie called Every Man's War. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's things that are out there. I I did a couple TV shows that were filming in Portland at the time. Sure. You were in a uh, you were in a leverage. You were in a librarians, right? A, a grim. Grim, yeah, yeah. So those types of TV shows that would pass um, through town. Not Portlandia. Not Portlandia. No, that was um, much to your chagrin. The, so all the of your to, friends were in it. Not true, but the key <laughs> but, to but Portland, a lot of them. <laughs> the key to Portlandia was uh-huh. always to get in early. Like yeah. if you could get in that first season, they would reuse you. Yeah. Uh, different roles, uh, sometimes the same role, but you really, really had to kind of uh, elbow in to the elevator that first year because after that, they were pulling like Tim Robbins yeah. and yeah. you know Brigitte Nielsen and uh, Kyle Steve McLaughlin. Buscemi, yeah, and Kyle yeah. McLaughlin. I mean, yeah, he was kind of a yeah, he was he, in. I mean, he was the, a, he was a goddamn mayor. I think he was in the pilot episode or, or close to it, but yeah, you'd see um, Amy Mann would be playing a part. Jeff you would think Goldblum, that, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Like those were roles that would typically and lots be of musicians because farmed out to uh, local actors. And of course, yeah, yeah, sure. if you can get Jeff Goldblum, yeah, you're gonna get Jeff, and he's gonna probably do it for nothing, yeah, just because he wants to play. Um, then yeah, you go ahead and you get Jeff Goldblum and you tell right. the local actors to sit this one out. Yeah. And you're we're, like, you know, this is IFC money, right? Jeff? We're good here. Yeah. And you know, my, I had, a uh, lived with an, an editor, one of my roommates who edited Portlandia and, uh, kind of learned about how the sausage was made on that show. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't miss it not being on that show. Yeah. I don't know what it would have done. Right, right. I can't think of somebody who actually got on that show who who got who made an a, who it was, was a that was show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a little, uh, you know, a bit of a cliche that said, you know, if you get on Portlandia, don't be funny. Like they don't want you to to stand out. They don't want you to pull yeah. focus. It's Fred and Carrie show, mm-hmm. and rightly so. They yeah. just, you know, <clears throat> they want. Sure. They want the the 
the humor's the coming from them and everyone else are straight people. Exactly. Straight, straight in the parlance of the yeah. straight men. Yeah, set it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Set it up, let them spike, and they're both very funny. And you know, I've I've met them both and and they've been nothing but charming and uh funny in, in yeah. limited, very off camera sure, 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 interactions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, you in in New York, you've been You've been doing commercial stuff that um, people would have seen the mm -hmm. during during the pandemic. Uh, there was the MLB ad that you were in uh, that literally any baseball fan saw you uh, every fucking commercial break. Yeah, that played a lot. If you were streaming it on the app, it, that app, it was seriously. Brian was like Sean. Uh, Brian, who will be on for friend of the pod. Yeah, friend of the pod. He'll he'll be on. We have him scheduled in a couple weeks. Um, but he, he, he was like, Sean, I'm seeing you every commercial break. Uh, cause he's watching his Mets on, <laughs> on MLB.tv and he is seriously seeing you like 15 times a game. Um, and that might've been before I met him too. Like he had only kind of known me. I don't think, well, I, we were I, in the league together all the time, but we were in the league, yeah. but I don't think I met Brian until he came out to New York. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he, were we doing zoom trivia at that point? Probably we were, we were doing zoom trivia at that point, but yeah. That so was, funny that was the only way he, he to like, know me was through zoom, yeah. through zoom um, and, and being in a baseball league with him, fantasy baseball yeah. league, and then just inundating his, <laughs> sure, yeah. his broadcast. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I've, uh, you, you had kid hands work. with, uh, Orlando pace pace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can see, B bunch kind of Bud Light ads. Yeah, did a Bud Light. Uh, I've come back with worked with them a few times, and um, yeah, commercial actor. I would say you've uh, also directed uh, a fair amount of ads. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been involved with kind of directing and maybe writing uh, some branded content, mm -hmm. um, both in Portland and also in the Twin Cities. Yeah. Um, would like to do more of that, but right now working on kind of longer things, working on a play, working on um, this, this venture called Cinequote. Yeah. And then, Oh yeah, we uh, should obviously talk <clears throat> about that. Um. So Cinequote was just uh, essentially looking around the internet for the, a game that hadn't been invented. Yeah. And uh, one of my best friends from high school and I just decided to invent it. So uh, it, you know, an easy way to say it is it's kind of like Wordle, but for movie quotes. Mm -hmm. But if you That's have a little bit more out. time, you just hear five quotes from a movie. Mm -hmm. Starts hard, starts a bit obscure, and then gets progressively easier. So uh, all five quotes are from the same movie. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, sure that your mind is like, hard condition for this type of game but yes. we like to we like to think that uh anybody can kind of play it mm -hmm. just don't i wouldn't i would say like it's okay if you if you miss a day or two um yeah. you know because we do change the genre we do change the decades quite a bit yeah uh in the course of a week we might have quotes from uh, uh you know the princess bride uh robocop um casablanca Saving Private Ryan, uh, Bend It Like Beckham. And, and 84 then, Charing Cross Road. And then 84. You asshole. <laughs> Charing Cross Road. If anybody uh, knows that movie, boy, you uh No you one did. <laughs> it was a very high fail rate that day. Uh, but it we, was over 90%, right? It was almost 90. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't know anyone who's seen that movie. I, You know what it was? I think it was a movie that uh certain school districts had as a substitute rainy day movie it just appeared i think it was just your school district <laughs> the only people who got that right are people who you went to school with uh, i you know and you and you might look i'm not i'm not going to get into the weeds on who was uh -huh. cheating and who was, wasn't but like you could 
probably figure out it was Anthony Hopkins and you can probably figure out it was Anne Bancroft. And so we might just say, Josh, to let this one lie, that 10% of people cheated that day. Yeah, I feel like 10% did. Um, and like anything from Wordle to yeah. the crossword, you can cheat if you want to, like whatever. It's a lot um, harder to cheat on Wordle. That's on you. But no, yeah. but what I mean... I mean, I guess you, you can, can go online and see somebody's... Yeah, say, just open up a, a new browser and play Wordle and then play it sure. on your phone. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, for me to kind of make because it makes me re revisit these movies um, that maybe have been 20, 30 years, which is yeah. a lot like this podcast. Uh -huh. And sometimes, I mean, I, I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but sometimes you just, God damn it, you end up watching the whole fucking movie. I'm sure, yeah. I went back and you're like, you're like cutting, cutting audio clips for, uh, you know, Die hard with a vengeance, and suddenly you're like, oh, God, it's been two hours. <laughs> yeah, that's what the hell happened. Why, why do I hear? I was only gonna pull quotes. <laughs> why do I hear bird song? Oh, yeah, that's five in the morning. Okay, yeah. oh, um, I guess I, I just watched that. Yeah, that happened. So that's you and Flat, obviously. Flat, who also did the randomizer for uh, Much My Benson, yeah, the great Flat, yeah, the episode.lol. Anyone can use it. Um, you can watch it. You don't want to think about a show. Uh, yeah, put in a TV show, hit the randomizer, yeah. let episode.lol do all the hard work. Uh, so yeah, so the I've you know I've I've showed up on the radio in in mm -hmm. various forms in the last been on people's 20 years. screens. I've been on people's screens, and now I'm podcasting. People's ears. I've been and this both. isn't your first foray in, in the podcasting, though. The the, the I know the the oh, fight yeah. one was very niche. I've been a guest on podcasts uh, here and there. I can't really remember which ones. Um, I was on a podcast maybe a year ago where it was people who were just looking at movies and television made in Oregon. Okay. And so they actually did a deep dark episode. Okay, nice. Yeah. And so I popped in on that one. Um but yeah, I ran a one of those those weird like little frills of your kind of resume where you're like, yeah, yeah I I was a journalist covering the UFC yeah. uh, for about a year uh, as a freelance journalist for the Oregonian covering <laughs> covering Ultimate Fighting, and then to you know maybe maybe it was around there. I, can't I mean, it was a time when when there were a bunch of fighters or not a bunch, but a handful of fighters, you know, working out of, out of the Portland area that were pretty yeah. big. There was a, a famous gym out there called mm -hmm. team quest. Um, and the proximity to that allowed me to kind of interview famous fighters who were training yeah. them. Yeah. And it was uh, like, you interviewed Randy Couture, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, Nate... and I interviewed, uh, Dana White. Yeah. yeah. And Dana. Mm-hmm. I got Dana for about 20 minutes, which was great. Yeah. Um, but around that time, I was doing a podcast called The 1010 Round yeah. uh, with the great Tony St. Clair, who will be a, uh, can't say too much about this, but will be a published author by this time next year. Nice. Yeah. Um, lips sealed. But uh, yeah, we talked the fight game and yeah, just one of those weird little hobbies that became a a job for a time, but yeah. not my first podcast. No, no, not my, not my first rodeo. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's probably good for now. I mean, I think people, that's probably get to know us probably more, more than good for now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You'll get to know us through, through the yeah. show. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, but I've known Josh since freshman year. Yeah. 1998. Wow. A long fucking time. And like uh, the, definitely first, like, First quarter because it was quarters still the we we're last the last year of quarters was our freshman. Year. I would say uh, of that because we met in a uh, film class and in the we were in the same dorm but we met in the yeah. 1901. You know, intro I, film. yeah, and that was uh, you're you're the strongest connection I have from that from those days. Like yeah, I easy. I've I've well retained... other than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah other, sorry other than the person you married uh -huh. um and i've been friends with your wife for a long time too. yes she's, yeah. she's one, one of the best yeah. one of the best people 
but yeah, I I've retained most of my uh, Minnesota connections to my high school buddies, but yeah. Josh is uh, yeah, you're you're the you're the banner guard for college. Yeah, same. Likewise. Um, cool. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Sean. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, everybody. <laughs> yes. Uh, cool. So uh, now we're going to kick to the pre-interview with Leon for Night of the Creeps, which was super fun. Can't wait. And Leon is, uh, I, he's probably back already, but uh, when I was in LA, he was working locations on the new PTA movie. Oh, very cool. Yeah. He was up in NoCal shooting that, that super secret uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movie that not even the crew knows if it is or is not an adaptation of Vineland, the Thomas Pynchon novel. <laughs> but we're sure it's not a remake of Night of the Creeps? It could be. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> the, he, the, like no one knows, no one other than the cast knows if it's like none, zero crew members know if it is. Uh, so the, it's it's possible. Night of the yeah, Creeps it, it could be remade. Could, yes, sure. Uh -huh. You can't unequivocally yeah. say. Yeah, but Leon was a uh, Leon. I was very jealous of him when I found out that he was working on uh, Night of, or on <laughs> Night of the Creeps remake that Paul Thomas Anderson's doing. <laughs> you heard uh, it here first. Yeah, folks. you heard it here first. Uh, the, it, it is most assuredly not a Night of the Creeps remake. Uh, no. But yeah, the crew the crew did not even know if it was the. Because it's rumored online, but uh, no, no one knows. So, yeah. All right, fingers anyway, crossed. Very, it's 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 weird when a friend is working on a show that you're like, oh fuck, man, I wish I was working on that show. Well, good for Leon. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, Leon, Leon's uh, pre-interview uh, will be coming up here in a second, and then next week it'll be the main event, Night of the Creeps, Fred Decker film, uh, fun movie. Fred Decker vehicle. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks, Sean. Cool, guys. Or a guy. See you, Josh. Unkind Rewind. Uh, we are greeting our next guest this week and uh, touching base with him before he's rewatched the uh, movie that he's not seen since his childhood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this week we're joined by Leon Henderson, a uh, buddy of mine from LA. Uh, Leon, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, hello, I'm Leon Henderson um, Jr. Uh, there's not many Leons left in the world. Uh, I think they all died out in the seventies. So <laughs> most people are like, oh, I have an uncle lately. It's never like, yeah, it's never. Oh, yeah, it's always yeah, an my uncle. best buddy. Yeah, yeah. My uncle named Leon. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. And it's usually like white people, which is weirds me out. I'm like, wow, because I guess it's a what is it's a Latin name or it, like Latin? And, oh yeah, from like Leonidas or something like that. Yeah, 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 like Latin and you know, like Romance languages, Spanish mm -hmm. and all that. Sure. But I've never met any other uh, Spanish people. <laughs> they tell me it's always, it's always a bunch of white guys. Yeah. Or a bunch of black people. <laughs> like, sure, sure, uh, sure, oh, sure. Who named Leon? Then they say, "Oh, he died." <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Leon, um, I guess you don't have anything to plug right now. Uh, not that you won't maybe in the, in the future. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, as, as, uh, as it goes with everything, sure, sure. Went this way with this podcast for, I don't know, the year and a half that we were developing it. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to get stuff off the ground. Yeah, I mean, I can give people my cash app. <laughs> hey, <a> cash app me. <laughs> just, just in case. If you I'll, I'll, put it, to some money. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> cash app Venmo, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you're, we know each other from, I'm assuming we didn't sign any, NDA, any NDAs that preclude us from being able to say that we work together on The Voice. 
No, no, no. Uh, I think that's I still think okay. Did. I think we can say that. I'm we, pretty, we have I'm IMDb pretty, pages that put us on that show. <laughs> right. so. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, no one follow rules on that show. <laughs> no, so. no. Uh, I mean, we won't say like where anyone stays or anything like that. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, so you're you're in LA. You've sort of moved on from the voice, and you're doing location work, right? Yeah, yeah, I do uh, location work for uh, film and TV, and um, I get yelled at from uh, neighbors and crew members about yeah. things. Yeah. Um, hey, why did you pick this location? Uh, I don't know. Uh, ask uh, the production. Uh, manager, director, uh-huh. everyone else but me. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just um, the I'm just the person. I'm I'm the punching bag today. <laughs> right. I'm the guy that you yell at for. Yeah. Hey, why is the toilet working? Well, uh, don't clog it. <laughs> hey, this. Do you understand how toilets work? Yeah. How sewage system uh-huh. works? But you know, it's yeah. fun. It's fun. You get to meet a lot of cool people. You get to meet some jerks too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On both sides, but uh-huh. I mean, it's cool. You know, I I enjoy it at times. Sometimes, but I have to talk to every single person. Yeah. So you just mentally exhausted most of the time. Oh yeah. So. Yep. You know, it's fine. Kind of same capacity when I'm having to coordinate or PM on a. On a oh show. man, I did. People always say I don't want your job. No, I don't want your job. <laughs> I don't well, want your job at all. I think I'm retired. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, you, I mean, your list, we could have done an entire season on on the movies. (laughs) Like we, I, we were talking about this, like that, uh, me and Adam and Sean were, uh, but yeah, we easily could have done like an entire season off of just the movies from your list. But, uh, the one that we chose to, uh, to, to do for the show this time around, at least was night of the creeps, which to be frank, none of us, at least Sean and I, I'm pretty sure Adam's also not heard of it. None of us, none of us are familiar with this movie. I really? Think. It's possible Adam seen really? it, but I thought he also said, Sean has definitely never heard of it and nor, nor have I. Um, now, so since we haven't seen it and it's very possible the listeners haven't also, uh, memory is, can be kind of tricky. So in uh, briefly, just... Um, Describe for the listeners what you recollect as having been the plot. Just ba- just rough, oh. you know, broad strokes plot of the film. Easy. It's just like a it's like a campy 80s uh alien like takeover movie. But okay. it's it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets uh uh Dawn of the Dead type. Like it's it's 80s completely oh. and I loved I loved 80s movies. Oh, yeah. And I was just telling my wife today, um, <laughs> growing up, my dad was a huge and still is a huge horror fan. Okay. So he watched horror movies and just movies all the time. Right. And uh, he was big on, like, having cable. Like, we we had cable when I was a kid. Uh-huh. We and, didn't. like, I will talk to other people. Yeah, they were like, we didn't have cable. Like, my dad would let the lights go off before the cable went off. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, we can't see anything. Hey, well, HBO is still on. So, yeah. uh, let's. And you guys so always had was, the movie channels? Always had the movie yeah. channels. Always had, uh, even like the regular cable, you know. Sure. Like in the, in the 90s and stuff. So, all those movies, um, that would come on, uh, I just remember my dad and he used to rent movies too. So he used to rent movies like I remember like Maniac Cop. <laughs> Love Maniac <laughs> you know, like, Cop. Oh, he's it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy films. Yeah. Love and Maniac I'm, like, Cop and Samurai Cop. Both awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm third, fourth grade. Yeah. And I'm watching this stuff. Uh-huh. My mom was like, What are you doing? But my dad would watch it. I would watch sure. it with him. Um uh but like with Night of the Creeps, it's basically this uh in the beginning, it's uh <laughs> this alien. This alien uh, ship, and then these like these doofy looking aliens, like I don't know, this weird uh, prosthetics. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And they they basically drop some kind of uh, waste or some out of the ship. It lands in on some uh, on the planet, and 
it's kind of like a high school love story in a sense, you know, like okay. the nerd <laughs> trying to get the girl. Sure, sure, so sure. Like the guy, find, it's like some guy in the field finds the this thing, and it's these little uh, slithery creatures. Okay, and they kind of like get in the town and they take over the town, and it's like prom night. See, okay. prom night or like homecoming night. So it's it's like a build up to the end. Yeah. Um, do they do they snatch people by going up their holes? Yeah, they get in there. They get in their miles and like okay. the prosthetics for this movie. We're is, we're not seeing any <laughs> rectal entries. Uh, I don't think well, so. Well, I, I mean, it did. <laughs> I don't. Re- I, that's the thing. I don't remember that, yeah. but I remember uh-huh. it's like a cryogenic scene. Okay, where um, I think it gets in somebody and if they get frozen or something, like when you see it, it'll remind you of. All the the campy eighties sure. horror sci fi, mm-hmm. because I'm like I love I love sci fi horror. Yeah, I'm not like a huge like slasher person. Sure, sure, sure. But, but I like, watch they live, like, or yeah, <laughs> yeah uh-huh. they live. Yeah. Like I love I love stuff like that. So I, yeah. I mean I watched I watched the uh, you know Friday the Thirteenth and I did watch Halloween. I wasn't a huge Halloween mm-hmm. person, but Friday the Thirteenth just because it was so corny. It was like. Yeah. This dude is literally walking, and y'all can't escape him. Uh, so <laughs> he'll well, he'll never stop walking though. Jason Voorhees doesn't stop walking, <laughs> right? Like he's not he's not running anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. can't swim. No, he just <laughs> trudges. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, um, yeah, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's basically like just a uh, alien takeover movie with kind of like the Revenge of the Nerds type vibe with. You know the guy trying to get this girl. Sure. And I think I think it's not high school. I think it's college. Okay. I want to say, and I think the the girl is in a sorority. This is like some kind of party, either either some kind of right homecoming uh, or sorority something. party. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, it's like the the I think that's the build up toward the end, and then he like becomes like a hero, and you know. But it's if you I think it's eighty. It's either between eighty six and eighty eight. I think it's eighty six. I think it's eight. Yeah, I, I think it's eighty six. So. I only know this because I had to look it up. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't seen it. I I honestly am uh, shocked that yeah. you hadn't seen it. Yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, I didn't have HBO growing up, so it's one of those like <laughs> if you didn't have HBO, <laughs> well, they used to play it on. It used to come on like TBS. Yeah, we didn't uh, have cable. It used to play it on TBS and and also all the time. Um, but there's a lot. There's a lot of that stuff that I didn't see until my twenties. Uh, yeah, um, I, I I I I was lucky. I was lucky. I got access to like all these yeah weird like super sure. weird movies. Um, that's probably how I am. Why I am how I am today? <laughs> <laughs> so like, why are you why are you watching yeah. this? Uh, this so like, how thing. old were you when you saw this for the first time? Man, so I might have been like nine or ten okay is it say. is it just is it like pg-13 or is it an r i think it's r okay all right i think i, I hope think so. it's r yeah I, I it's, it's always r. really funny to me when kids because that's not a thing that happens anymore really but uh when, when, kids, <laughs> when kids are just like oh whatever i watched this fucking movie uh <laughs> I, I watched this wildly inappropriate movie when i was fucking eight you know <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, I think it was eight or eight, mm-hmm. like between eight and ten. Yeah, I it was say definitely I was like nine or ten. It feels like that's a thing that stopped uh, with our generation. Oh yeah, yeah. They were like, oh my god, there's a, I don't know, whatever. And they're like, we're not gonna, you can't watch that. So because yeah. my wife, she didn't, she didn't watch, she didn't watch TV when she okay. was younger like that. Yeah, like her yeah. dad wouldn't let her watch the Cosby Show. And I was like, you can't watch the Cosby show. Yeah. Like, that's what could you watch then? Pretty milk just... toast. <laughs> right. <sighs> like you couldn't even watch Little House on the Prairie. Like, mm-hmm. is that what you watch? But I always make fun of her about that. So sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think you were like as a kid when you were watching this movie? Like like sort of, I guess, describe it like you watched this a lot when you were a kid, I assume. Or a fair amount. Yeah, I every time it came on, I would Try to check yeah. it out. Uh, I think because I always was into uh, just anything sci-fi, anything space, anything aliens. 
Sure. And then anything like creature involved. Plus, you know, in the 80s, they actually use the prosthetics. Yeah. So yeah. so it doesn't it, it doesn't uh, age like milk. Oh, it definitely ages. You're well, no, no, milk. but oh, like yeah. it de- it doesn't age like milk like this CGI does, where like it looks so bad. Oh a year yeah. Later. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still watch it today, and cause, I mean, even like the Blob, the remake mm-hmm. from like eighty, was it eighty yeah, six? I think, yeah. Uh, I could watch that today, mm-hmm. just because you can watch The Fly today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that probably. I think maybe a couple years ago. Sure. Um, the 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 David Cronenberg. Yeah, yeah. I want to say, and like I've seen a lot of his movies. I'm like, dude, what the? Fuck? Yeah, he's but... doing some pretty crazy shit with prosthetics. <laughs> but it's 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 <clears throat> um prosthetics, man. I think it saves the movies at times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we just we the the first one we recorded for this was Labyrinth, and there's like, oh no, it's puppets, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't age as poorly because like it's practical effects. Right. Right. Yeah. You can still use that today. I mean, even like Willow, mm-hmm. like the scene where the, the dragon turns into dragon. That's still cool. Like oh, yeah. the CGI is, is whatever, See, but sure. It still looks cool. Mm-hmm. Like seeing that as it changes and you can tell like nobody's like, Oh man, that happened in real life. It's like, no guys it didn't really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't uh-huh. really happen. Um, when do you think the last time you saw this was? Man, it has to be at least 10 years, at least 10. Like I'm thinking, I don't know if I've seen it since I've been out here. Okay. I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe when I first got out here, possibly. Yeah, but that's still a ages ago yeah yeah Yeah. it was years ago i got out here in 2011 yeah um i mean i watched it with my dad because we used to watch the movies together sometimes and just laugh did you like (laughs) did you have this recorded off a tv or anything no no we i I would just always watch it sure uh, it's like real genius for me yeah (laughs) yeah i would just watch it like just on when it came on Uh um I never I'd, had, I'd like, watch Real Genius on HBO East and West same day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I've done that. Like, oh, yeah. I'll watch it again? Let me uh-huh. turn this on yeah, again. fucking A. Uh, well, and TBS used to, like, cycle. If you watch it in the afternoon, it might be on again at, like, 3 in the morning, right? Or 2 yeah, in the morning or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, HBO, too. Like, sometimes they'll play it. They might play what they – I don't know if they do this anymore, but they would play something really, really early. Maybe like they might play it like eight in the morning or something, sure. and then they would play it again, right? Uh, later that night, yeah, um, as a premiere, so you could watch it, super, right? Super. Right, when it first drops, it's going to play like mm-hmm. six times that first week, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have any memories that like particularly stick out about Night of the Creeps, like the scenes that scenes that stuck with you or? Or like watching this with your family or or whatnot, like hanging out with your dad watching this or something. Uh, something in that vein. I remember. I remember. Uh, I think it was some scenes where, particularly how they get in your body. It's just uh-huh. like an orifice or whatever. Sure, so sure. I sure. was. Seeing, I remember seeing. <laughs> I think it got into a dog. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like he ran into a dog and the dog went around and then they like spit like the animal or the person or whatever spits it out into another person. So it's like parasitic in the sense. Mm-hmm. But then uh I think they I think it gets like it's it's like a bunch of them and they kind of all it's kind of like the hive mentality with the creatures. Okay. It's so weird explaining this. <laughs> it's in the movies. Yeah, Adam and I just did uh just did the Puppet Masters for oh, the yeah. Much Movie that. Club, which is the same vein. Um <laughs> and yeah, no, it's like we're I'm very glad we didn't have to describe what the plot is. <laughs> at a certain level it's kind of nonsense. Um <laughs> I mean so, this one it's pretty it's pretty like straightforward. It's just like a uh campy uh, yeah, you know, like one of those. It's like like those high school, college movies sure, where sure. they had like the, 
the protagonist is kind of like a nerd and then right. he becomes like this hero in the end. Yeah, because he's a nerd. Girl. His nerddom saves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Did that resonate with you? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he wins. Yeah. Um, you got the hot girl. I don't even remember nerd, if he got her or not. As a sci fi nerd, did this this click with you? I mean, all I think all of it does. Okay. Uh, all the sci fi, anything yeah. sci fi, even because, you know, sci fi movies, like you try to explain it to somebody, and like, I'm not going to watch that. I'm like, okay, right. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just watch them by uh-huh. myself most of the time. Um, and my brother watched, because my brother's like four years younger than me. Uh-huh. So, uh, but we watched all all this stuff, man. You sure, know, sure, sure. My dad would, you know, hip hip us to it, and uh, sometimes we would just take the tapes when he rented and just watch them ourselves. Uh-huh. So, oh, it's raining here, which is a uh, oh, Christmas nice. miracle. <laughs> it's yeah. not a Christmas miracle. No one can drive. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's it's terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh God. Yeah. When it's raining. You don't want to get in the car. <laughs> don't leave the house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if, if it starts raining hard, basically the entire, like, the entire right third of the lane along the curb is just flooded. <laughs> <laughs> like, there a funeral going on? It's like, no, we, nope. no one can drive in nope. the rain. Yeah. We've got lanes that are just like non op- <laughs> non operational right now. Um, so uh, obviously, you haven't seen this in like a decade at least maybe longer uh what expectations yeah. do you have for your return to this now in 2023 do you think it's gonna do you think it will have aged well or uh think there probably are be not. problems <laughs> like probably not because i mean you know a lot of 80s movies and 90s movies but mostly like 80s yeah just the, like because of how uh the world is now yeah um it and i don't know i I can't remember any of the jokes but i'm just thinking because Uh it's an 80s movie right because of it's like right in that that middle tier like in the middle where like remember like in 80 i say i think from like 85 to like 90 there was like a crap ton of movies that Mm -hmm. just came out everything was just hitting yeah um even before then, you know, like, you know, 48 hours, another 48 sure. hours and all mm-hmm. this stuff beforehand. Uh, but like later on, the mid to late 80s, early 90s, there were so many like just and it's classics for a lot of people. But it's like, hey, are you going to watch that now? <laughs> like, I want to show this to the third grade class. Like, no, probably yeah, shouldn't. Don't do that. Maybe do watch that. it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you watched this thing? 15 so- years? So are you most worried about it being like problematic from a, uh, I would, I would assume since we're a political standpoint or not, or or like problematic from a, you know, casual homophobia or casual racism or uh, that, that sort of vein, or I guess not really. Cause okay. I don't even remember any black people being in a movie. <laughs> I don't yeah, remember. Which, I just is, remember which is a problem people. in and of itself. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember white people in the movie, but yeah. uh, I mean, it probably was like some black people in the background. I think sure. on like the football team, they're, they're probably <laughs> the first ones to get taken, but get, <laughs> yeah. get, they have their bodies <laughs> snatched. Yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, I don't I don't remember any homophobic jokes. It might have been one or two when they made fun of like the guy the like, trying to get the girl, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But I I literally can't I sure. seriously can't remember. Do you think um, quality wise it's going to hold up mostly? Like, do you think you're still going to enjoy enjoy it watching it? Uh, you know, as as a what you, we're roughly the same age. Uh, yeah, so, I think as so. As like a as like a grown ass man with, I mean, you've got a, you've got a wife, you've got a family. Yeah, um, but I still watch that stuff. Uh-huh. Still, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like, everything... I've definitely seen things where it's like, oh wow, I don't know what happened. You know, what, yeah, like, like I, I'll still I'll still watch stuff and like because it keeps me, I don't know, it keeps me going. Like I still have comic books. I still have yeah, yeah. Uh, video games. I still sure. I don't get to read or play that stuff as much. Yeah, and anymore. you get to like look at it sitting on the shelf or yeah, uh, I'm like, look, oh, look wow. at the video game console. Uh, yeah, I bought a PS5 last year. I just opened it 
like two or three months ago. Sure. And, and I still and haven't played, played it. I played it yet. like maybe three uh-huh. times. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Can you at least play DVDs through it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my wife had a whole bag of DVDs because she she loved like rom coms. I used to make sure. fun of her about that. But I love I like rom coms too. But like if they're funny, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Like I yeah, like yeah. I like funny rom coms. So um, I don't want to watch it like a sappy, you know, dramatic rom com. Like all right, let's right. just have some jokes. And like that's the thing too. Now you don't have that type of comedy. You right. know, like we've been talking about you know, sure, like, sure, sure. like the mid tier, mid mm-hmm. budget. Comedy yeah, they don't make a what would now be a fifteen fifteen million dollar comedy doesn't get made anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's, if it's not if it don't have a superhero in it. Mm-hmm. You're like don't. <laughs> yeah, don't, those movies those movies disappeared, and now you're getting five million dollar comedies or less that are you know going straight to Netflix or whatever. Yeah, and none yeah. of them are getting theatrically theatrically released. You know, right? Almost right. None. Like I would go to the theater to see you know a funny movie, but yeah, you know, it's a it's a. I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird time as far as excuse me, like just content. Yeah. You know. I mean, you have, you basically have to have an A lister, or it needs to be an indie. You know, there's no in between. You know, right. Jennifer Lawrence can get no such uh, no hard feelings released, um, based right. on it being Jennifer Lawrence, but but that's right, kinda, right. That's kind of it. And I think know? that was the last. That was like the last comedy, right? This summer. It came out like July. Feels like it. I mean, Bottoms came out right around Bottoms, then. But Bottoms but that was, was an still, indie. It's yeah. indie though. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Bottoms was different. So, like those movies that get released, you'll see them, and a lot of people love releasing themselves, but you don't hear about them as much as you would, right? You yeah. know, something like that. And it's With also the, harder to. It, it's much easier to have lost them in the last, you know, six months since. Strikes, yeah, strikes yeah. were going on, so nothing was getting promoted. But yeah, you couldn't promote anything. So, yeah. you know, it's it's a different time. I think with Night of the Creeps, um, seeing it today, I think I'll still enjoy it mm-hmm. um, because I don't, you know, I don't let you're I able guess, to look at it in the time. Yeah, was, yeah, I don't let outside noise like, hey, look, if you enjoy this for what it is, then you you do it. As opposed mm-hmm. to like, like I mean, like the Toxic Avenger, <laughs> like I, I was gonna put that on the list. Like I loved watching that. Like I watched that all the time. We did Those Romeo are... and Juliet for movie club too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, movies are terrible, but uh-huh. they're great. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like oh, a lot of those movies at that time were politically incorrect. Like, you know? Oh yeah. You know, a, it... a trauma film was politically incorrect. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Uh-huh. yeah <laughs> it's like, it's like intentionally transgressive yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah so it's like you have to you kind of have to just enjoy stuff for what it is as sure. opposed to like i'm gonna put this label on it and then i'm gonna call my representative to right 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 no, no I, i'm pretty much on the same page i mean there are certain things like you know, rape was played for jokes uh, in the eighties, which is like in yeah. Revenge of the Nerds and Sixteen Candles. Uh, yeah. There's stuff like that that is like, oh no, that is f- that's like, how is yeah. that okay? But like it, Porky's, it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but for the most part, for the most part, you know, if I, I'm mostly concerned with what a movie's trying to be, you know? Right, right. Like if you know what the whole like intent of the movie is yeah um i mean just like a conversation like i've talked to all different types of people sure but if you know it's if your intent is to be just a jerk about stuff just to right. be a jerk then why am i have a conversation with you we're yeah. just talking uh-huh. and, and on, a film a set, on a film set you are going to run into that <laughs> oh yeah a film yeah. set that's uh-huh. that's everybody almost because yeah you know like there was an incident that happened when i was on said before like this past week and uh it just made me like man i missed being here but also that type of stuff you know like the entitlement like i don't uh-huh. i don't enjoy that right you know and it's kind of like come on man we're all we all just got back yeah. <laughs> we yeah. all just got back to uh-huh. work and you just have to flip out like yeah. you're a cameraman 
Like, yeah, you're, you're like six months off, didn't fucking like chill you out a little bit? <laughs> yeah, not the DP yeah. or the director uh-huh. or the AD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not one of the three people for whom like your <laughs> right. life really just sucks. And I mean, they're getting paid, but their life is like pure misery for the entire shoot. Oh, dude, yeah. Like you're the camera guy. You're getting paid more than yeah. I definitely am uh-huh. right now. Yeah. And everybody else. So I think it's just the intent for, for, a lot of things sure, we sure, don't, sure. if we look past that and just kind of like all right this is what it is i can enjoy it as mm-hmm. opposed to oh well they were saying this and they were saying that well yeah duh <laughs> like you know a certain movie because i think uh there's a movie that's out right now called uh lady ballers and it's about the i mean that's not really a movie though let's be let's be fair you, have you heard of it have you heard yeah of it? yeah but i mean that's like it's fucking ben shapiro's company produced it yeah yeah or so... no sean hannity sean hannity is an ep on it like this is oh, that really? yeah it's it's not a real movie it's yeah. only re- it's only released to their streaming platform uh yeah, yeah i saw because i know somebody that worked on it and he was just showing it to me and um I was like, yeah, this is it's definitely uh not for everybody. Um most people. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry. I'm confusing that and jingle balls. Or j- sorry, jingle smells. Uh there's jingle smells which jingle is the Sean smells. Hannity one and there's Lady Ballers which is uh that fucking um that's that's produced by the Blaze, I think. That's uh, the the Ben Shapiro company. That's the Daily Wire. Or yeah, sorry. The, yeah, yeah, Daily, Daily, Wire, Wire, Daily yeah. Wire. I just found out about about this stuff. Um, like it's you know it. I don't. But those are both like D list and D list actors headlining the thing, or it, the Lady Ballers is like not even that. Like not real actors, and it's just like those are just like vanity projects that are that are basically troll jobs. Yeah, it's it's a weird just just the time we're in about you know what freedom of speech is and yeah all types of stuff. Um, I don't know. That's a whole nother right. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that for uh, Night of the Creeps, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, uh, we'll let everybody go you and i can keep talking <laughs> but uh yeah we'll um we'll check in next week having watched this and yes. uh, and see how see how night of the creeps is aged um could could be fine could be totally i mean fine. i'm i'm thinking it's fine yeah honestly i don't remember it's just i just think about the time period where sure yeah 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 yeah. you're you're judging it because of its release date basically <laughs> yeah it's like 86 like uh, uh, oh yeah lots of fucked up stuff was happening <laughs> you saying whatever yeah. the fuck you want to oh, okay all right <laughs> okay cool i mean like remember uh god man we used to, i used to watch soul man a lot C was it C Thomas Howell? C Riley? Thomas Howell. <laughs> C Thomas Black, Howell. C and, Thomas uh, Howell. Yeah. Yeah. C Thomas Howell. C, uh, Ray stuff. Don Chong. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Ray oh. Don Chong. Black yeah. He <laughs> he goes to Harvard on a scholarship as a black guy and has to be in blackface for the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, that's and that's 1988. <laughs> that's like two years after this. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. and then even uh, Short Circuit with um. Yeah, Fisher Stevenson uh, brownface. Fisher playing the Indian guy mm-hmm. and like. Then you find out, like, this is a white dude. Yep. Yeah, you find <laughs> like, that out when you're watching Hackers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, like wait, this motherfucker's from... white? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I The 80s, man. I, I It thoroughly... could go anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed the, the, the uh, artistic output. But it's still, like, this this weird you know um sure. this weird dynamic of how it plays out today yeah you know because it's everyone's like oh well i love these movies but i can't watch them anymore like you can so, still watch them still watch them yeah <laughs> just like like my mom let me watch dev comedy jam when i was a kid sure. but she was like i just don't want to hear you saying it 
She uh-huh. knows I curse like all the fucking time. Right. But right, right. just as me not saying it to her or like right. hearing me saying it to somebody else, like I'm not gonna not watch it because yeah, some of the jokes are are very outdated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's still funny. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's another thing, like comedy and that's another conversation too, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Night of Creeps is funny though. I will okay. say that. Okay. <laughs> it's a funny movie. Right on. Uh, well, cool. Thanks for joining us this week, Leon. And thanks for letting us potentially ruin your childhood next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> should be a, oh, it should be a fun one. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, is there anywhere where people can find you on, on uh, social media or anything that you want to put up? Uh, Other man. than Cash App and Venmo, which will be in the show notes. Cash App and Venmo. Um, well, I have a uh, uh, I have an Instagram, a couple Instagrams. Um, I, th- I always forget what it is. I think it's Leon Junior Photo. I okay. do a photographer mm-hmm. and like videographer, and um, I have like a comedy page, Afros and Yamakas. I'm probably gonna change the name. I just okay. haven't changed it in probably sure, sure, sure. Ten years. I have guess. you been getting up on stage doing any uh, mics or anything? Uh, not in a while. Okay. Um. I did some maybe a couple months ago, okay. uh, like November, November. Was it oh, uh, October, November? <clears throat> was it at the it, like in the belly room or? No, I haven't been. I haven't been to the store in a while. The store in a while. Yeah. Um, but I still, you know, I still talk to to people. Uh-huh. Um, I don't hang out as much. Like, you know. I mean, it's hard to if you. If you're yeah, in your situation. Bring the kids here. It's like, hey, yeah. why are your children here? It's yeah. like, oh, I have to bring them with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 11 o'clock. Like, oh, they're fine. Yeah, they're it'll, fine. it'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give them some cookies. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's it's uh, it's cool. I, I don't get a chance to get out as much, but I still write a lot. Sure. I still write. Right on. Um, on jokes here and there. Um, but, it, you know, it kicks your butt most of the time trying to. Sure does. Uh, yeah mentally yeah. trying to stay trying to stay up so yeah. i'll drink a lot of tea <laughs> like an old man yeah <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh thanks leon uh we'll uh, see you again next week of course of course you've just listened to another installment of the unkind rewind podcast mining and potentially ruining your childhood for content one film at a time. Unkind Rewind is a Munchcast production and can be ingested wherever you listen to podcasts and on the Unkind Rewind YouTube channel. Music for this and every other episode of Unkind Rewind was composed by Divorcio Suave. Rate and review Unkind Rewind on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, Yelp, IMDb, Consumer Reports, Google Reviews, and TripAdvisor. Links to all of our social media accounts are in our show notes, but you'll find us as at UnkindRewindPod on nearly every social media platform that makes sense. If you had a question, concern, complaint, or (gasps) positive feedback, you can email the podcast at unkindrewindpod at gmail.com or you can join the lively Munchcast Discord to discuss this or any other episode of the Unkind Rewind with like-minded people. This dialogue with the pod may just make it into the next week's episode, so chat away. The Unkind Rewind Patreon will be coming soon, so start squirreling that pocket change away. Thank you for listening to another Unkind Rewind.